Hello YouTube fam, this is Tekken Armory, and today I will show you my Leo Tekken 8 journey in 100 matches. Leo is a character that is said to be well-rounded. He is a jack-of-all-trades master of none, simply because he has most of the generic moves available. As my main Elisa is kinda like far from generic, I became interested in trying out Leo. The first thing I did was to check out Leo's mover list in practice mode. I select a stage with walls that are far away in case I want to practice using combos. I decided to first learn Leo's punishers. I tried to look for an article or website for the input data, and luckily, I found this. I've placed the link to this website on the description of this video. So, I decided to test the Punisher inputs right away, and it looks like they are all working for Tekken 8. I chose to learn Punishers first, since I get bored easily if I choose to learn the commands from top to bottom. After trying out the Punishers, I decided to start the challenge by playing the first few ranked matches with Leo. My first opponent was Kazuya in green rank with a 9 win streak. I tried my best to remember the punishers, but I am a slow learner. So as expected, I got myself beat up. Okay, oh man, why the heck did I do that? For my second opponent, I got matched with another Leo. In this case, it looks like we were both beginners, but I haven't learned anything besides the punishers. But I did learn some of the moves while playing. Like this running three, which looks like a generic flying kick that is plus on block. So I still lost games three and four. And my lose streak still continued on game five and game six against a Jin that looks like Huarang. So I decided to learn some combos. I checked the sample combos from Tekken 8 and tried out a few ones. I had trouble learning this combo the first few tries, but eventually I did it. So far, I know how to do punishers, some generic moves, and some of the sample combos. After trying out and mixing up the sample combos, I decided to get back to the challenge. I played against this Rainer who destroyed me the first game. I continued on to the next game, and what do you know, I got my first win. On the third game, she got angry and beat every part of my body. For the next set of games, I went up against Claudio and I lost to his hop kicks and magic arrows. What the heck is that? After losing to that, I decided to get back to training combos and I discovered that I can modify my ender to use a blue spark, just like with the just frame moves of other characters. Then I checked the other moves on Leo's mover list and found his sort of bread and butter mix up stance, the Jinji Do Le stance. Most moves when entering this stance where his knee is like this, leaves Leo at a plus nine advantage. It means the opponent should have limited options against my mix-up. I then tried practicing some combos using a kick, which is input three from that stance in case my enemy ducks after the knee. Then I decided it's time to get back to ranked games. I went up against this red ranked Lily. I tried to use the new stance I learned, but eventually 
I still lost, mostly due to me whiffing very badly. Oh my gosh! I so bad! On the next set of games, I went up against this Yoshimitsu, where I got complete destroyed during the first game. I eventually won the set by using pokes and relying on the stunts mixer. And also, I got so very lucky on the last moment where Yoshi failed to punish my rage art. Oh, uh, yes! Let's go! On the next set of games, oh, I became bear. lunch for a bear and dinner for a ghoul. I hate those things. After those losses, I went training again and checked more moves from the move list. I tried experimenting and exploring new pokes and setups I can use for battle. Then I tried mixing up combos again and I finally did a 70 plus damage combo. To summarise what I learned so far, after 20 games plus training, I learned how to do punishers, generic moves, mixed the sample combos, a few pokes and setups, how to enter Jinji Do Lee stance with an advantage, and a combo that I can use from that stance. I went back to the challenge and I faced off with this Huarang, where I tried to do my heat smash after my heat burst, but the range is short, and Huarang successfully managed to backdash and punish my heat smash. The next game I got beat up by Asuka, who doesn't want to fight again after winning, so I learned less on this matchup. Next, I faced a king where I won the first game using the extended Hell Sweep if I had Lightning Glare. These are the red and blue light on Leo's hand. Eventually, I lost the next two games to King. I realised it's time for me to learn some counter-hit combos as there were many big counter-hit combo opportunities that I missed. Went back to rank, got destroyed by Asuka. And got destroyed by Lars. I decided it's time to learn from Leo experts, and I found this video helpful. I learned that down forward one of Leo is above average, and I learned about what pokes to use to condition the opponent. He also talked about his favourite combos and some dash moves and wall splat moves that we can try to do ourselves. I went back to training and tried to practice some of the lightning glare moves. Like I said earlier, it is the red and blue thingies on Leo's hands. You gain those lights by successfully hitting the enemy using certain moves or by either doing key charge or while in heat. I went back to ranked and I got matched with a Super Saiyan Jin. I got confused with his playstyle and forgot where the timing and where should I sidestep so he beat me two to one. The next set of games I won because I was able to poke down and beat this Claudio before he can use his magic, bow and arrow. The next set of games I went up against the Lee, I got beaten by his sliding kicks and his barrage of kicks. And the 
next set, I got destroyed by another Lee. I also realised I can't do any combos from his sides. After game 40, I checked some of the replays and rethink my in-game choices. Then I practised and experimented doing side combos. And eventually, I discovered this combo which works on both sides and from the back doing 50 damage. This is good enough for now. Then, I decided to try out simple wall carry combos. And this is what I came up with during that time. Then I went back to the challenge and played a lot of ranked games. Most of these I lost, but I managed to win a few games and a few rounds. Game 64, I went back to training and I experimented with some wall splat combos. I tried to maximize the damage by searching the mover list for good enders and good tornado moves. Then I went back to ranked where I won a game against this raven, but eventually I lost the set. Next game, I went off against this fun. He destroyed me and made a key charge after the battle. Then he didn't try to rematch. I then went back to practicing wall splat combos and I was able to do a 60 damage combo plus a stomp using a power crush starter. After 70 games, plus training, plus watching. These are the things I learned so far. We will get to this in a bit more detail at the end of the 100 games. Then I went back to the challenge and played a lot of ranked games. I first went up against this king where I won a game from him. I used down forward two as a bait for another down forward two.
Next game, I lost to a very aggressive Jin where my wrong choices ended up being my fast doom. <laughs> Then I went and won against this Lily twice. The next few games have been sets of three, which means I won at least one game from each opponent. Last, I got promoted to an orange rank. My Leo is now a vanquisher. There are only nine games remaining before ending the challenge. I decided to do the most important thing in Tekken, which is customization. After customizing, I went back to training and tried to experiment doing long wall carry combos with heat. For the last set of games, I continued playing and learning about the character. And I am winning more games when compared with the first 50 games of the challenge. Here is a summary of the things I learned after playing 100 games, plus training, plus watching. Punishers, especially his 10 frame leaves Leo on a stance, which is very helpful. Generic moves, sample combos, pokes and setups, the Jinji Du Li stance, how to combo from that stance. Some counter hit combos, where there are still many counter hit moves to discover, a one for all side and back. Combo which does 50 damage. The importance of down forward one checks, some low pokies to condition the enemy to duck, lightning glare moves, wall carry combos, wall splat combos, long wall carry combos, wall carry heat combos. What are my choices after heat engage? 
after heat smash, some parry or reversals? And how can I use down two as a pressure or frame trap tool? These are my opinion of the strengths and weaknesses of Leo when compared to Elisa. The strengths of Leo is that he has a better down forward one, which leaves him at negative one. His generic down forward two works on ducked opponents, but it's punishable. He has a better throw game, which is usual for most of the characters except Alisa, which is kinda obvious. He has a hell sweep from neutral stance. His heat smash is faster, 16 frames. When compared to Elisa's 20 frames, he has a faster, while standing two, 15 frames compared to Elisa's 17 frame, and overall has a better while standing Punisher lineup than Elisa, especially his 11 frame while standing Punisher. His disadvantage to Elisa is that his overall range is shorter, especially his heat smash and hop kick. He has a dash, but like a wave dash, it is hard to execute when compared to Elisa's boot and dual boot. You can do the dash after certain moves though. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Feel free to comment your feedbacks and suggestions. Also, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to watch more content like this.